this is the most important conversation to have surrounding USC football right now. And, and if you missed the story earlier in the week, I made the point that with Jim Leonard being jilted, being left at the altar by Wisconsin, he's a free agent now. And the industry speculation is that he will take the Green Bay Packer defensive coordinator job uh, once uh, Matt LaFleur fires uh, Joe Barry, his failing defensive coordinator in the midst of a horrible Packers season, which is not going to make the playoffs that, you know, Mike bone, if he has a chance to make one of those stealth ninja moves, just as he made the stealth ninja move to get Lincoln Riley, something no one saw coming in this industry last year. If Mike bone and Lincoln Riley can make a move on Jim Leonard and convince him, Hey, you need to be at USC. This is where you can win a national championship. You can raise your stock and you can then become a head coach at a power five program, you know, obviously Wisconsin, Chris McIntosh, the athletic director there felt that Leonard failed his audition, right? Graham Mertz. He, he was the coach killer for Paul Christ and Jim Leonard. He took down two coaches in one season. All right. So if you're Mike Bone and Lincoln Riley, Hey, is there an opening before the green Bay Packers make a move at defensive coordinator, uh, can you sway Jim Leonard and say, hey, this is where you need to be. This is, how, this is how you can send your coaching stock soaring. If they can make a move like that or for another elite proven defensive coordinator, USC should do it. All right. Because you should have the best. Like you shouldn't settle, you know, for second best. You shouldn't settle, settle for ordinary. But when I say that USC should make a move if it's there, that's not the same thing as saying USC – USC should fire Alex Grinch because we all knew that Alex Grinch was not, did not have a fully stocked cupboard this season. He was not going to have all the dudes, all the depth that he really needed to be great as a defensive coordinator. And this is really just a continuation of the Alex Grinch, Lincoln Riley story that we've saw that we've seen uh, over the past four seasons, three at Oklahoma, now one at USC uh, with the exception of 2020, in three of these past four seasons, you know, the, 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 the Alex Grinch defense under Lincoln Riley has been entirely unremarkable. But when you consider that Alex Grinch was hired to clean up the mess left by Mike Stoops at Oklahoma in 2018, you know, so Oklahoma's 2019 and 2020, 2021, 2021 uh, defenses you know, they weren't very good, but they were better than Mike Stoops in, in 2018. So we have a situation where Alex Grinch is basically the garbage man. He's asked to clean up a really bad mess. He's asked to take a, ver a really bad situation and make it better. And he has, but it's not that much better. So you get still what is a, a mediocre, you know, below average product. But, you know, what did we say throughout the offseason here at USC? It was Alex Grinch's job is to make USC's defense not terrible. And it was terrible last night. And it's been terrible for the second half of the season, starting with the Utah game on October 15th. USC's defense was terrible in the two games it played against Utah. So that's not the opponent you want to have a terrible game against. And Grinch flunked twice against Utah. But over the course of 13 games... He was not terrible. In those first six games, Grinch was actually very good. I mean, through the Washington State game on October 8th, let's let's try to remember what that was like, all right? Two months have passed, but, you know, let's remember, Alex Grinch was legitimately a Broyles semifinalist caliber coordinator through those first six games. USC, USC's defense completely won the Oregon State game in week four, September 24th. And USC's defense at least had a 50% share, if not a majority share, of responsibility uh, for winning that Washington State game 30-14 to 14 on October 8th, shut out Washington State in the second half. So as a 13-game body of work, Alex Grinch did not underachieve. In fact, he slightly overachieved over the course of 13 games. This defense over 13 games was not terrible. It was terrible in the second half of the season, especially against Arizona, even more especially against Cal, uh, had its a lot of rough moments against UCLA, a rough second half against Notre Dame, and then got blown away by Utah in the second half 
last night, but over 13 games, the Alex Grinch and the defense did not underachieve. They were, they met that low bar. Now, again, it's a low bar. They were better than terrible. <laughs> that, that doesn't mean they were good, but they were better than terrible. And it was enough to get this team to 11 wins and very likely a near six bowl. So it's a continuation of what we've seen from Alex Grinch in 2019 with Oklahoma, got getting blown out in the playoff by Joe Burrow and LSU. And then in 2021, falling just short of a Big 12 title, but still winning 10 games. Uh, then Bob Stoops takes over in the Alamo Bowl and Oklahoma wins an 11th game with Riley and Grinch, uh, newly situated at USC. So with Alex Grinch, the bottom line is, he is very clearly not a great defensive coordinator. He is also just as clearly not a bad defensive coordinator. Now, people are going to say, okay, the defense was bad this, the past several games. Yes, but of course, we knew that USC didn't have the top shelf talent or the top shelf depth. So Alex Grinch contained the damage enough that this team exceeded preseason expectations. This was viewed as a 9-3 and three team. It finished 11-2. and two. So you can't say that Grinch did a bad job, but he also didn't do a great job. And that's been the story of his career. So in, in terms of focusing this conversation on Alex Grinch, I want to make this point very clear because this gets to the heart of the conversation with Alex Grinch. If you replace him with Jim Leonard, many will say, oh, Lincoln Riley stabbed Alex Grinch in the back. What a Judas. You know, what, what a betrayal. No, you can't look at it that way. Lincoln Riley has been incredibly loyal to Alex Grinch. All right. I mean, he, like he is stuck with Alex Grinch in ways that other coaches would not have. But if you have a Jim Leonard out there to, to nab and bring in as defensive coordinator, like that is not an insult to Alex Grinch to say, hey, we can upgrade and, and, and you, need, you need to find a defensive coordinator job or maybe a group of five head coaching job like that could be the the chain of change of scenery and the breath of fresh air and a, and a, you know if Grinch does want a group of five head coaching job like I think he's earned it like let's let's see what he can do um so like it shouldn't be seen as a betrayal of Alex Grinch if Lincoln Riley sees an upgrade and is able uh to make it in in concert with Mike Bone um USC should be looking for an elite coordinator and on a broader level is just, do you have the best possible man for the job? This, this is, this is not about college football. This is about any walk of life. This is about any profession. You should want to hire the best man for the job. And so it's not a criticism of Grinch so much as it's just, he's done fine, but fine is not elite. Fine is not college football playoff. Fine is not, getting blown out by Utah in a conference championship game and, you know, ending a season with a blowout loss against a really good team. Like that is part of the Alex Grinch profile. So like I am fine. I am fundamentally fine with the idea of letting Alex Grinch coach for his job and his future at USC in 2023, because like it will be the ultimate put up or shut up season it will be the ultimate prove it moment for Alex Grinch. If he does get 2023 at USC, like it will be the, the no more excuses. You now have to produce, you now have to upgrade. You now have to teach tackling and teach technique and, and teach players to get results. You know, year one was your grace period, your learning curve, 2023 training wheels come off. You have to deliver. I'm fine with that, but I'm also perfectly fine with the idea of, if, if Jim Leonard is willing to come to Los Angeles and you can make that very obvious upgrade, well, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you want to upgrade any part of your football operation? Why wouldn't you want to upgrade any part of your business? That's really the, the uh, collection of tension points at USC that I don't think Alex Grinch has disqualified himself from this job. I think it's perfectly reasonable to allow him to pro prove himself once and for all, up or down, in 2023 but if there's a better replacement available why wouldn't any football coach why wouldn't any business seek to improve its product